Hey, Rainbow here, and finally, I get my hands on a Ducati Multistrada V2S. This one is the S model. Now, let's talk a little bit about this bike. This, of course, has the 937cc Ducati Testra Strada 11 degree twin. And this particular V2 starts out at a base price in the US of $15,295. And the V2S model is $17,895. But you get a little bit more bang for your buck with this. Now, the power of this particular bike is about 113 horsepower at 9,000 RPM. And when it comes time for torque, it's about 96 Newton meters or 71 pound feet of torque at 7,750 RPM. Now, let's talk about servicing on this. Oil changes, 9,300 miles, which is pretty darn good. And the valves don't have to be checked until 18,000 600 miles, which is pretty darn good. Now, this particular bike weighs about 438 pounds dry. It also weighs 496 pounds wet, and that's for the S version. The dry weight of the regular V2 is 202 kilograms or 445 pounds. And of course, the wet weight of the S is 225 kilograms, which I just said as 496 pounds this has a five inch tft on it all right and guess what in addition to that tft we also have a plane going over the top of me so i'm gonna wait for that to stop so this bike has a five inch tft and four ride modes the same as the v4 and those four ride modes are enduro urban touring and sport for those who are not familiar with the v4 or v4s it also has power modes this bike does come with cornering abs it has ducati traction control cornering lights vehicle hold control and it also has the ducati brake light now I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean that the engine braking turns on the light? I don't know. If you know, put something in the comments below. I don't know the answer to that question. I was gonna look it up and I forgot. So let's keep that as some discussion. I would like to think that engine braking triggers uh, from the factory, the brake lights coming on. That would be really a, a good safety. All right, now, this particular seat from the factory is 830 millimeters or 32.7 inches. You can get it down with just a low seat accessory to a 810 millimeters or 31.9 inches. If you're a taller bloke, let's use that word now, uh, you can get this up to 850 millimeters or 33 and a half inches. Now, if you are definitely a shorter rider and you don't think that that 32.7 inches or 830, I'm sorry, the 810 millimeter or that 31.9 inches is low enough, you can get a kit where you have a suspension kit and a low seat, and that'll take it all the way down to 790 millimeters or 31 point one inches now this particular gas tank is 5.3 gallons otherwise known as 20 liters let's talk about this front suspension all right this particular one since this is the s model has 6.7 inches of travel it has a 48 millimeter fork and that has electronic adjustment for rebound and dampening only just like the v4 on the rear here in the s version it has a mono shock that has electronic compression rebound and spring preload adjustment all electronically and this of course has the ducati skyhook suspension evo that is semi-active as far as the brakes on this puppy you are looking at Brembo M4-32 monoblocks on the front with 320 millimeter discs. And on the rear, you are looking at a 265 millimeter with a single Brembo rear brake 
caliper, which by the way, looks almost exactly the same thing that's on the back of the V4. This is a six speed gearbox and it has up and down quick shift thanks to that device right there. Of course, since this is a Multistrada, and of course, you know, this is not the Pikes Peak version. This has the 19 inch front wheel and it has the 17 inch rear. And just like the V4, this bike comes with, guess what? Pirelli Scorpion Trail 2s. I think what's important is that we take it for a ride and see how this rides and see how it feels. Okay, let's get on this and take it for a ride. Of course, we're gonna gear up, always gear up. I'm not gonna uh, close this because I need some more airflow, all right? But we have riding jeans, riding boots, gloves, and of course, a riding jacket. So to get it to where I'm at, I obviously had to ride the bike. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, it, it is extremely well balanced. And let's, not, let's start it up. Oh, it really sounds good, okay? We're back into Desmo Dici land here. So we have the Desmo valves on this, unlike the V4 and the V4S. And the bike, you can definitely tell it's a lighter bike. It's not as bulky, it has a smaller tank yet it is a very comfortable ride now one of the things that i'm really excited about this bike are the mirrors these are the same mirrors minus of course the little portion here that has the indicator for the uh, radar this, this bike does not have radar like the v4 but it's the same really good mirrors and i want to see what a v2 if these mirrors vibrate a lot okay i put it in sport mode let's take it for a ride and see how it goes Hey, Rainbow here. So I'm gonna have to narrate this one. It seems as though uh, I had a little audio problem. Actually, I had a big audio problem. So I'm gonna have to narrate this and we won't be able to listen to the engine sound because it's pretty much all wind and me faintly talking in the background. So let's go over this bike um, from top to bottom. And I had a really good opportunity to ride this bike for just a solid half an hour. And as usual, when you ride a bike just for half an hour, you're very limited on what kind of review you can do um, however, I was able to formulate an opinion on this bike rather quickly because of the fact that I ride the bigger brother to this, the Multistrada V4S. Now, this is the little brother or little sister, however you want to do it. Um, and this bike, it, it's actually a fantastic bike. And if they did never, if they never came out with the V4S, and this is the first one they came out when they changed over to the V4s, V2s, and they came out with this one first, I probably would have bought this bike because this bike just feels good. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when you get on this bike is that it is lighter than the V4S. If you're used to heavier bikes like the V4S, which isn't super heavy, but it's not a light bike. The next thing that you're going to notice is that it's a very comfortable seating position and it might be just because of the way the seat is and the way the handlebars are, but the handlebars seem a little bit closer and I think that may be solely because the seat kind of pushes you a little bit to the front. The seat on this one isn't quite as comfortable as the V4, but it is an extremely comfortable position and again the handlebars seem to be just a little bit closer to you so that you're sitting in a more upright position. I have a 32 inch inseam and I'm about five, I used to be five foot 11 and a half, somewhere around there. And you know, pretty average, you know, to above average in height. And this bike fits like a glove. The riding position I'm in, it feels like I'm at home, especially after putting 22 plus thousand miles on the Big Brother V4S. Just those minor details where the seating position feels like it pushes you a little further forward and that might be what's making the handlebar seem a little bit closer. Now, um, as far as putting your feet down to touch, once again, not a problem, 32 inch inseam. Uh, these bikes seem a little bit 
you know, higher because they are adventure bikes. They have all the clearance underneath because they are also designed to go off road and it's going to be a little higher for you. Um, but in addition, this bike, you definitely know that it's, it's not as bulky as the V4S. It has a smaller gas tank by just under a, a gallon, but it's not as wide. It doesn't seem as big and bulky in the front, although the V4S isn't an issue as far as bulk, as far as I'm concerned. But this just seems a little narrower, um, and because it seems lighter, and be, well, it is lighter, and because it's a comfortable seating position, um, it is very flickable. This is a very comfortable bike. Again, even with that 19 inch wheel in front and 17 in the back, this bike seems to be, it, to me, it's almost like riding a toy when you come from the V4S. So again, any of those guys coming over from the V4S or maybe you have, a, you know, you're a GS rider or like an R1250 RT, something really big and bulky, maybe a, you know, a, Africa Twin, which is a very comfortable bike, by the way. Um, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with this bike. Now, with the 32-inch inseam and the position of the controls, uh, my foot controls are in a great position. And again, I feel at home with them. It's very comfortable as far as that's concerned. The controls are the same for just about every other Ducati out there other than the Multistrada V4 because the Multistrada V4 is set up a little bit different on the left side and has of course has a bigger display. Now this display it's a 5 inch TFT, uh, good contrast, nice colors, easy to read, uh, you know what gear you're in, you know your RPM, you know your speed, it's really easy to see, you know what mode you're in and I've been on a lot of bikes that have very lackluster TFTs that really don't know you, they just don't tell you where you're at you, and you have to kind of search around for things and eventually get accustomed to it this thing it's nothing like the a v4 and i hopped on it and i just was like oh this is easy it's easy to see and it's easy to go through the menu now this particular one as the v4s it has the heated grips and it has the same mirrors as the v4 multistrada Minus, of course, those yellow indicator lights for the blind spot monitoring because the V2 does not come, nor does it have an option for the radar. So you're not going to get the blind spot monitoring. You're not going to get the dynamic cruise control, but you will get cruise control. But these mirrors are really, really good. If they can take uh, mirrors like this and retrofit them for something like the Panigale V2, that would be fantastic because, uh, you know, Ducati isn't always great with the mirrors, uh, but in this case, they hit a home run with this one on this Multistrada V2 and, of course, on the V4 Multistrada. Now, ah, with that being said, it's a lighter bike. It feels very flickable. It's very easy to ride. It is linear when it comes time for the power delivery. There are four riding modes just like you're going to have on the V4. So if you're on the fence and you're like, should I get the V4? Should I get the V2? I I'm going to actually give a really good recommendation here. If you want to save yourself money and dynamic cruise control and the radar is not important to you, I believe that this V2 is a better option, especially because on the base price, it's about $10,000 cheaper. And on the V4S, it's in the around the $7,000 less expensive. And you still get a great bike with it's somewhere around 113 horsepower, very good delivery of the power, good low end torque. It just feels comfortable. Now, I want to talk because I have the V4, I have the 170 horsepower available to me, available to me, but that power is really unusable. Like, where are you going to use it and drive legally? It's great for maybe going to the track or you have some places you can, you know, get away to that's remote and, and really get on the bike. But for everyday commuting, if you don't want something that's as big and bulky and heavy and you want to save a lot of money and have a fantastic bike, the Multistrada V2 is certainly the bike for that. Now, quick shift. It shifts very smoothly 
up and down, one down, five up for this six speed gearbox. Um, like a lot of bikes, and in particular, I found this one, and I find this on a lot of bikes, extremely difficult to get into neutral. It just seems like neutral takes a big effort to get into whether you're going down or clicking it up into neutral when you want to stop and shut things down. Um, that is something that just seems to be common in a lot of bikes uh, of many brands. The one I have with the V4, I'm become so accustomed to it that uh, I'm pretty good at getting it into neutral all the time, but occasionally I still have to mess around with it. With this particular bike, man, I really had to mess around um, to have that happen. So this bike has great braking power. When it comes time for braking on this bike, the Brembo brakes certainly do their job. And because this is a lighter bike, I tried some emergency stopping and it really worked well. It felt smooth, it felt comfortable, it wasn't jerky. You can do really good progressive braking on here. And of course it does have the cornering ABS and regular ABS which could be helpful in this case when i did my emergency braking i didn't feel it kick in at all normally you have that shuddering and that movement um, it's easy to get it if you want to jam your rear brake on but i did use progressive brake pressure and did some emergency braking on this using the front and rear brakes and at no point did i feel uh, the abs kicked in so it's nice to have brembo i know there may be some other brands out there for hardcore racers uh, that are you know better but for or most bikes that are made, uh, I would say that their Brembo kind of leads the industry and I'm very happy that they have these good brakes. I've uh, ridden other bikes that don't have Brembos and had issues with stopping, making the stopping feel smooth, uh, how quickly it was able to stop. So I'm really happy with these Brembo brakes and I'm glad to see that Ducati kept some money in on this. Now we talked about the suspension. This is adjustable just like the rest of them. The front forks, you can do rebound and compression adjustment. Um, the rear is where you're going to set your preload and of course rebound and compression uh, on the rear mono shock. This does have the Ducati Skyhook and the suspension on this particular one, the V. 2S uh, really works well. Uh, I put it in sport mode right from the beginning. I wanted something a little stiffer. It raises it up a little bit, the height. And when I was riding this bike, I felt very comfortable. I did a couple loops around this big circular area and I went in both directions. So I was leaning to the left and I did it again. So I was leaning to the right and it didn't feel soft it didn't feel spongy and it just from the factory going to sport mode with my weight and my height um on tires that really aren't even scrubbed in yet it felt really really good so would i buy this bike yeah i actually would if i was in the market for a bike and this was the budget Right now, with some of the other stuff, I would still take this bike over the uh, Harley Davidson Pan American. I would take the V4 over the Harley Davidson Pan American. Uh, I felt the GS was just kind of big and bulky and it set up more for off road. But when if you want some spirited on road riding, you can't go wrong with either of the multi stratas. And this V2, I think, really hits a nice spot sweet spot because the price is down lower and i think it's even starting to compete now with stuff like the tracer 9 gt or the tracer 900 gt whatever they call it now uh from yamaha which is a fantastic bike it's competing with triumph you know i did try the tiger 900 and 
you know, I took a lot of heat about that because I didn't particularly care for the bike. I know that there's the uh, Tiger 1200 coming out, but that has a big 21 inch wheel and an 18 inch rear wheel. It's again, set up mostly for people who are gonna do off-road. I like to do spirited riding. So something like this V2 to me is a fantastic, fantastic bike. And it comes in at a much better price point than getting the V4. You have all the power you need and then some. You don't have to spend the money on a premium just to have the radar. Uh, you have all the electronics you need. You can, of course, get the heated grips. You can put panniers on the bike, um, center stands, heated seat. You can do all of the routine things basically other than the radar. That's about the only thing that you're giving up. And of course, about 57 horsepower that you don't need. You really don't need it. So I really like this bike a lot. And I think that if the V4 isn't in your budget, then the V2 would be a fantastic choice. So I think Ducati really hit uh, the mark with this bike, uh, kind of converting the 950 to the V2. Uh, I think it feels better than a 950. I think it rides better than a 950. I think it's smoother than a 950. And it's, it's a step up in, in my opinion. It really is a step up. So this bike feels very comfortable and I would recommend it. Now, as always, and, and again, I'm gonna remind you, I have to thank Ian from Ducati Forza, otherwise known as Two Wheels World in Pompano Beach, Florida, just outside the northern border of Fort Lauderdale, Florida on Andrews Avenue. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, that dealer and Ian, my salesman, who's a great guy, um, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. So I would highly highly suggest that when you stop down at two wheels world you ask for ian he's a very experienced rider um he doesn't bs you he's very honest he's sincere and he always takes the high road so he's one of the better guys that i've really dealt with in a long time and i'd highly suggest i don't want this to sound like a commercial but i have to let you know that i'm appreciative because i get the opportunity to test ride these bikes really because of him and I'm just appreciative. So give him some appreciation if you live in the area, even if you're out of the area and you want maybe a good deal, you know, call down and ask for Ian at Two Wheels World. So this is Rainbow. Uh, like and subscribe if you're still here listening. If not, you're not going to hear this. I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you and have a good day.